History Month, and it's a very good time for non-black Americans to gain a full appreciation of the centuries of slavery, segregation, persecution, and oppression that the white majority of our country imposed upon a people brought here in bondage and abused in every imaginable way, in some cases right up to the present day. Most older Americans are generally aware of the horrors of slavery, but tend to believe that all that ended in 1865 when the North won the Civil War and the Republicans enacted the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. What followed was a decade of Reconstruction, when freed blacks in the South enjoyed some civil rights and elected black Republicans to Congress from the defeated South. But in 1877, Northern control of the Southern states essentially ended, and angry white Southerners quickly ushered in the era of Jim Crow racist oppression that didn't fade away until the Civil Rights Acts of the 1960s. To understand this shameful story, get hold of a copy of a new book by Henry Louis Gates, Jr., titled Stony the Road, Reconstruction, White Supremacy, and the Rise of Jim Crow. It's a documented, illustrated, and well-written story of the dark years after the end of slavery when black Americans struggled to gain the equal rights guaranteed to all Americans. In my lifetime, America has made enormous strides forward, and we need to keep on until this task is finished. This is John McClory. Thanks for listening. WDEV also serves the Northeast Kingdom at 101.9 W270BR Island Pond. Early on, WDEV owner Lloyd Squire set the mission. No business or service exists entirely within itself. It must be a part of the area in which it lives, not just as a member of the community, but as a contributor to the life of that area. Over the decades, we feel WDEV has made valuable contributions, including our many talk programs that provide a voice to our listeners and expanding our offerings with podcasts and our reach with streaming. Advancements my dad couldn't even have anticipated. What's next? We don't know, but we're hoping you'll help us experience it together. You can support WDEV with a gift of $90 to celebrate our 90 years and help ensure 90 more. You can send checks to P.O. Box 550, Waterbury, Vermont, 05676, or make credit card payments online at WDEVradio.com. We've been on this journey together. Let's continue it that way. Thank you. The Brady Farkas Show is produced and funded by WDEV and the Radio Vermont Group. We welcome listener feedback. Email your comments to WDEV at RadioVermont.com. The teams you care about. When you think about the Patriots' needs this offseason, look for one trait. Explosiveness. The stories that matter to you. I'm not convinced that Ben Shungu, that he's not the league player of the year. This is your home for New England sports. Bobby Dahlbeck playing third base this year? Now that is interesting. This is the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV AM, FM, and WDEVradio.com. What's up, everybody? Welcome in. Brady Farkas Show right here on a Wednesday on WDEV AM and FM and WDEV Radio. Com. We go up until 6.45 tonight. High school basketball with Brent Curtis takes over then. It's Randolph and Montpelier on the boys' side. Plenty to get to. Tom Karen of Nesson is in with us in 15 minutes. We'll hear all throughout the show from Freddie Coleman of ESPN Radio. And I've got some free, unsolicited advice for people out there who want to propose. I'm going to talk with you about that just after the start of the 6 o'clock hour. You can get in on the Napa Morrisville, Napa Waterbury text line. That's 802-585-3026. Your locally owned Napa stores in Waterbury and in Morrisville. You can also check in on Facebook Live where the crew is already assembling. So on WDEV's Facebook page, just check us out there again on Facebook Live. So you can comment there. And remember, tag a buddy who you think might like the show. And you can qualify to win a $25 gift card to the Valley Bowl. Let go! 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And here we go. The opening thoughts on the Brady Farkas Show brought to you by Sticks and Stuff and Swanton Lumber, Vermont's most complete locally owned home center. Locations in Enosburg, Derby, Middlesex, St. Albans, and at Swanton Lumber. They're online at sticksandstuff.com. I want people 
to know this. Let it be known that about one month ago, I came to all of you with an idea. And about one month ago, when I came to all of you with this idea, all of you laughed at me. Every, I've got the receipts on the text line. I've got the receipts on Twitter. And I've even got some guests. All of you mocked me for this. And now, let it be known that today, Wednesday, February 16th, 2022, smart people with prominent, with, with prominent platforms in prominent places, they now agree with me. I just want to throw that out there. You all laughed at me, and now smart people are saying exactly what I said a month ago. One month ago, I told you the Patriots should try to trade Mac Jones for Russell Wilson. I said, Mac Jones, two first-round picks for Russell Wilson. You all laughed at me. Well, this morning on WEEI in Boston, former Patriots tight end, Super Bowl champion, and friend of the show, Jermaine Wiggins, what did he say? Trade Mac Jones. Jones. Two landing spots. What is wrong with you? I didn't even expect that. The Houston Texans. I should have expected And the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Both of those franchises would probably, definitely could use a quarterback. Now look, I don't have any interest in Deshaun Watson at this point because of the legal stuff, so I'll scrap his Houston idea. But Wiggy says he tried to trade Mac Jones to Seattle for Russell Wilson, and you know what? I would do it a month ago, and I would do it today. Who still, are you all still laughing at me? Because I would do it today, and so would Jermaine Wiggins, a guy who played for the organization, who won a Super Bowl in the organization. He would trade Mac Jones for Russell Wilson, and so would I. If you want to win in this AFC, in this loaded AFC that's heavy at quarterback, you need stars we've talked all week about needing explosiveness in terms of what traits you're looking for you need stars and you need a star at quarterback also and russell wilson is still a star trust me you know i'm a seahawk fan at heart okay i love the patriots but i have watched every game that russell wilson has played for the entirety of his career save for maybe five russell wilson has always been a star he's still is a star. You can't get by in the AFC with pretty good at quarterback. Mac Jones is pretty good. You can't get by with that. Look what happened to Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill's pretty good. Look what happened to Carson Wentz. He's okay. He's got moments where he's pretty good. He's probably going to get released. Look at what's happened to Derek Carr, a guy that we really like who's never won a playoff game. Pretty good isn't good enough, not in this AFC. You can't get by with with quarterbacks being okay. You can't get by with guys being good, not great. And pretty good doesn't cut it. You need something special, and Russell Wilson is it. That's that's a deal I would make 100 times out of 100, and I would do it the first moment that the league calendar allows me to. I would call up the Seattle Seahawks, and offer up Mac Jones and two first-round picks for Russell Wilson. I would do it. Wiggy wants Russell Wilson, too. How many of you are still laughing at me? My question to all of you is this. Why wouldn't you make the deal? What are you all afraid of? Are you afraid of Russell Wilson's age? Russell Wilson is 33 years old. Matthew Stafford just won a Super Bowl at 34, well, 33 for most of the year, 34 now, and he'll play part of next year at 35. Aaron Rodgers just won back-to-back Super Bowls spanning 36 through 38 on the age spectrum. Quarterbacks are playing longer than they ever have. They're playing at higher levels longer than they ever have. The age thing, this is not a big deal right now. Russell Wilson has several good to great years left. So don't be worried about his age. Are you worried about Russell Wilson's legs no longer being effective? He's plenty mobile. Russell Wilson is plenty mobile. I don't need him to run 14 times a game. Running is not a necessity for him in the way it's a necessity for a Lamar Jackson. It's just not. It's not a necessity for him in the way it is for somebody right now like Zach Wilson who's learning the position. 
I don't need Russell Wilson to run 80 times or for 80 yards a game. I need him to be mobile enough to extend plays. I need him to be mobile enough to pick up some key first downs. I need him to be mobile enough to generate some some rollouts and some bootleg stuff and some play action, all of which he can still do and can still do well. And by the way, Russell Wilson's been getting killed for the last five years in Seattle by that offensive line. Patriots offensive line is better. Patriots have a good run game. Ramondre Stevenson has three years left on his contract. Damian Harris has this year and another. D- this is good. This is a good situation for Russell Wilson to come into, and he can be effective. I don't know that I want to come into the AFC in general, but if the Patriots want him and he's willing, then I, or if, if he's willing to come here, i do it in a heartbeat. I would do it in a heartbeat. What are all of you afraid of? Are you afraid that Mac Jones is the next big star around the NFL? He's not. He's pretty good. He's the next Ryan Tannehill. He could get a number one seed every now and then. He can win a division every now and then, but he can't win consistently. That is, I promise you that that is going to be the Mac Jones thing. Pretty good, not a star. Justin Herbert's a star. Patrick Mahomes is a star. Josh Allen is a star. Joe Burrow is a star. That's four right there that are in front of you in the AFC, and they will be for a while. And maybe Aaron Rodgers gets traded to Denver, and he's ahead of you. And maybe Pittsburgh goes and gets somebody in the trade market, and they're ahead of you. And maybe Cleveland, who was pretty good last year, maybe they figure it out, and they're ahead of you because they have a much better roster than you do. If you want to compete, you need explosive athletes and you need star power, and Russell Wilson is that. And finally, here's the kicker to it also. If the Patriots want to get to the level of those other teams, they need a lot, don't they? We're all in agreement there. They need a lot. Multiple linebackers. They need another edge rusher. They need, a defen- they need defensive back help. Devin McCourty right now is a free agent still. A vertical threat at wide receiver. Bring back some of that really good offensive line. There's a lot of things to do there. Do you trust that the Patriots can accomplish all of those things in the draft and all of those things with their free agent budget? It's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard to do everything. There's going to be a hole somewhere. We've talked earlier this week about getting erasers, about getting guys that cover up deficiencies. Nobody in the NFL covers up deficiencies better than Russell Wilson. Take it firsthand from me. He's been covering up deficiencies for about the last six years. Ever since the great defense blew up for the Seahawks, Russell Wilson's been carrying that franchise. The Patriots can't get everything they need to get done done. Russell Wilson can help alleviate those problems. He is one of the best erasers and best problem solvers in the entire league. I don't know why some of you are against this. Mac is young. Mac is cheap. I genuinely love both of those things. But in this AFC right now, and the Patriots roster is good, They need someone to elevate it, and that guy is Russell Wilson. Steve says he only, Mac only gets one year tough critic. It's not about me being a tough critic. It's about me being a realist. There's plenty of quarterbacks that are good, not great. Kirk Cousins is good, not great. I see Mac Jones in him. Baker Mayfield is good, not great when healthy. I see Mac Jones having the same trajectory as him, maybe a little better. Jared Goff got to a Super Bowl. It's okay. It's been good at times. It's not great. This team couldn't wait to get rid of him. This is who I fear Mac Jones is. I know what Russell Wilson is. And he is a star, and he's a star who can carry you and elevate you. And if you want to play with the big boys again in the AFC, you need somebody like that. If, you wanna, if you're content to finish second to the Buffalo Bills, get a six or seven seed maybe, and then get whitewashed in the first round of the playoffs, if that's what you're content with, then Mac Jones is your guy. If you, 
I will stop doing this show today and talk about European soccer if you tell me that that is what you're content with. If you're content with Mac Jones and getting beaten and pummeled in the first round like happened this year, that that, then there is nothing else to talk about. I'll stop talking Patriots for the next six months and we'll come back in here in August and get ready for the preseason opener. I don't think that's what your goal is. Your goal is to get to the Super Bowl and win it, and Russell Wilson gives you a better chance at that in this AFC. If this were the NFC, then life might be different. Maybe the Philadelphia Eagles don't need to move on from Jalen Hurts. The, the NFC is significantly easier. Mac Jones could get by in the NFC. Mac Jones right now can't get by in the AFC. Unnamed texter. Just because Wiggins says it doesn't make it correct. If he was that smart, he wouldn't be on TV or radio. Ouch. Ouch. Usually, the guys on radio that didn't play, usually we're the ones that get crushed. Jermaine Wiggins played. Jermaine Wiggins won a Super Bowl. Jermaine Wiggins knows what it's like to be in a locker room and what it's like to play with and for really good teams. Bob says... I like Russell a lot. He's been a scrambler his whole career. He's taken a lot of hits. He's got a, a two-year contract that'd be okay with it long-term. He's not a solution. I believe Russ has two years left on his deal. If you, I mean, look, I think to trade two first-round picks, you'd have to have Russ for a little bit longer than that, but you don't have to take him for nine years if you don't want to. You could get out of the Russell Wilson business earlier if you want. I trade two first-round picks, 2022 and 2023. Russ plays for me, 2022, 2023. I get my first-round pick back in 2024, and I go draft another one if Russ sucks, like all of you think he does, apparently. I don't think so. A uh, bunch of people on the, text, on, uh, on the message line here. Travis says, uh, pretty good only brings you so far. Ask Andy Dalton, Baker Mayfield, being a franchise player brings you a championship. Sounds like he's okay with me wanting Russ. And Frank says, Brady, don't stop. I'll miss you in the 4 o'clock news. Well, Frank, this is the, uh, the sports show here. I like the 4 o'clock news, but this is where we're, you know, hey, I, I hope you'd miss me here too. You know what? I think you should trade for, for Russell Wilson. Wiggy thinks it. What does Tom Karen think? And then what the hell is going on with baseball? TC is going to join us next on DEV. Hey, country music fans. Lee Bryce here inviting you to go on tour with me and my band. Play the Vermont Lottery's $5 Big Country Cash instant ticket, and you could win up to $20,000. And there's a second chance drawing to join me on the road. And we're talking concerts, backstage passes, and more. Basically, where I go, you go, all in the comfort of a luxury tour bus. For your chance to say, hey, I'm with the band, try the Big Country Cash instant ticket. I like Yo, so visit a Vermont Lottery retailer today. Please play responsibly. School vacation is coming. Looking for something fun to do with the kids? Check out the Trading Post online marketplace for great deals on fun ways to keep the kids entertained. Get a $25 gift certificate to Valley Bowl and Randolph for $20. A $50 gift certificate to Twin City Family Fun Center for $40. And a Modio Rec one-year family membership valued at over $500 is just $350. Find a full listing of of these deals and more at WDEVradio.com. At Matt Clark's Northern Basement Systems, they specialize in all things basementy. Matt Clark's Northern Basement Systems is the leading basement waterproofing, crawl space, and moisture control and foundation repair contractor in Vermont and New Hampshire. Their state-of-the-art features will help get the water out of your basement and keep your basement dry now while preventing basement leaks and flooding far into the future. Let them weatherize your drafty crawl spaces and basements using spray foam insulation. Matt Clark's Northern Basement Systems. They specialize in all things basementy. At Northfield Savings Bank, we celebrate the ways you work and why you work. To build a business, to make a brighter future, to do something that matters. You don't do just one thing in your business, neither do we. Whatever your size, you have goals for yourself and those around you. Our commitment is helping you get there. Builders, makers, doers. Northfield Savings Bank. Find out more about us at msbvt.com. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Hi, this is Anson Tebbets, co-host of For the Birds, heard Saturdays on WDEV. Each week, Chip Darmstead and I discuss bird sightings, bird counts, and activity at your feeder. You also can listen anytime to podcasts on Apple, Google, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Join us Saturdays at 7.30 and 12.15 for the birds. 
28 years on WDEV AM and FM and streaming at WDEVradio.com. Looking for the latest information on the Red Sox? Not only is David Ortiz a Hall of Famer, but he is one of the best of the best. How about the Bruins? Are they a Stanley Cup champion? Probably not as presently constructed, but they're a playoff team. And you've come to the right place. We talk now with Nesson insider Tom Karen. Baseball isn't boring because there's still nothing like the communal gathering of fans at a baseball game. On the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV AM, FM, and WDEVradio.com. Welcome back in, Brady Farkas Show, right here on this Wednesday on WDEV AM and FM and WDEVradio.com. Joining us now, as he does every single Wednesday, is our guy, Red Sox and Bruins insider at Nesson, Tom Karen, TC. How are you? I'm well, Brady. How are you? Excellent. We were just talking about this. Let's get you the final word. Mac Jones and two first-round picks for Russell Wilson. Who says no? <laughs> uh, who says no? I, 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 I say yes, and I'll, I'll probably, you know, live to regret that, right? Because uh, who knows uh, what Mac Jones is going to be. The upside is still real high, uh, but uh, you know what you're getting in Russell Wilson. Yeah, and uh, you don't know what you're getting in draft picks, and and we have seen uh, that a quarterback means everything, doesn't it? I mean, two teams that got there because of uh, one drafting, one trading, and and grabbing the quarterback they needed. Uh, I'd love to see a quarterback like that. Still like Mac Jones. Still think the future is bright. Just not sure next year is the the future we're looking for just yet. Well, hey, hundred percent agree with you. I would make that deal as well. So there you go. We're both saying yes. Now That's let's bad get... radio. We're supposed to argue and scream at each other. Come on. I, th trust me, the audience is doing enough of that for both of us <laughs> yelling at me. So so there's the disagreement coming from them. A lot of disagreement still on the players and owners side when it comes to baseball. You're not in Fort Myers right now, like you should be. Uh, I saw Joe Buck yesterday said he thinks the deal gets done in the next two weeks. Do you share his optimism? I, I do, uh, and and I, you know, I've been optimistic about this from the start. The next two weeks still gets you a full baseball season. I think I've said all along March first is kind of the, the drop dead date to get this deal done and not lose games. Uh, that's two weeks, right? That puts us right there. I, I think I, I keep saying this. This is a really important week, and it <laughs> has been. You know, we waited to see what the uh, commissioner, what the owners uh, would drop on, on Saturday. And while the players were underwhelmed, I, 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 again, the optimistic part of me believes that the fact that the owner, that the uh, players haven't responded yet, I think is actually a good thing. There's a lot to digest. It's 130 pages, uh, the full proposal. You know, this wasn't a, we'll lower this by 5 million, we'll add to this. This was a comprehensive proposal that, from what I understand, kind of, threw some new wrinkles and new ideas into it. Players aren't going to accept it. We know that. But I, I think the owners have tried to at least, and, and, and they haven't come anywhere close to what the players want, but at least they're kind of opening the doors to looking at some things some different ways. right? They, they offered two versions of a minimum wage increase. And neither one is enough. But again, I, I assume that it's not a final proposal from the owners, so I assume the, the players will get a better deal out of them. But the fact that there's two ways to look at uh, a flat my, uh, minimum wage or a tiered minimum wage over three years, the fact that they talked about some different things. So I, I, it's an important week because I, I'm told the, the union will get back now uh, by the end of the week or close to the end of the week, if, if not early next week. Uh, and what they come back with, I think, is going to tell us everything. Mm. If it's a yeah, no, th those are really bad ideas. Then we're in trouble. But if it's a, okay, well, you said this, how about we said, you know, that, that's how this has to get done. I, I just wish they did it more frequently, but I understand you got a lot of lawyers looking at 130 pages, and, and that doesn't happen quick because they get paid by the hour, so they're in the rough. <laughs> you know, we heard, I think it was uh, yeah, on Monday from Jeff Passon of ESPN, that the owners want to cut 30 minor league jobs per team when it comes to players. That would save them all of a whopping $500,000 over the course of a year. How do you read this desire to cut minor league players? You know, it's funny. You can look at it two ways, okay? I mean, honestly, and nobody wants to hear this, business-wise, it kind of makes some sense. There's a lot of guys in the minors who are never going to make it to the majors. And, and you know, the owners, in every, every time they make an offer, there's always a, yeah, we'll give you this, but we're taking away this. And that was sort of tied to the fact that they were offering 
uh, fewer options on on the older uh, minor league players. Right, right now it's six seasons with which you can send guys up and down options. Uh, that would go down to five. So, so uh, the players want four, but the owners tied it to that. Uh, what I hate about it more than anything, and then, other than the people losing their job, you don't want anybody to lose a job. But what I hate about it, it's just it's a bad look. You know, the owners are getting crushed in the in the court of public opinion. Uh, even though I, I think it's a little closer to the middle right now than you think. Uh, certainly, the owners have won the last couple of uh, labor negotiations, and the players are trying to get some of that back as they should. Uh, but it just it's you know after after eliminating teams last year. Uh, now talking about eliminating jobs, and and you see, you know, the court case <laughs> coming out at the same time about how they don't pay minor leaguers to go to spring training. Uh, it's just all a really bad look uh, that a ten billion dollar industry can't figure out a way to pay uh, minor league baseball players, or or even now keep them on the on the payroll. Tom Karen, Red Sox and Bruins insider at Nesson with us here on the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV. I, I am with you, I think, on this. It's a horrible look. I think it's bad because it will lead to elimination of more minor league teams in small towns where you want to grow the game. But I can't get on board with the people who are saying, oh, you want to take away my dream by cutting all of these jobs. I'm like, look at the, the NHL has less minor leaguers. The NBA has almost no minor leaguers. And the NFL has like eight practice squad guys like baseball is already lapping the field when it comes to giving guys opportunities yeah and, it, and you know historically i mean you've you've had what you generally have three single a teams prior to the original the cutbacks last year you had three minor league teams and and maybe a, a caribbean academy uh filtering into one double a team so that tells you right there uh, how few of those low-level minor leaguers ever get close to the majors, mm -hmm. let alone play for a major league team. Uh, and yeah, I, and you know, it's, I love the, uh, I, I, I love minor league baseball, right? I mean, my first job was covering the, the Vermont Reds <clears throat> when they played at Centennial and Double A. Uh, I, I love the Eastern League. I covered Triple A in Portland and Double A in Portland when the Sea Dogs came in after the, the main guides. Uh, I, I love minor league baseball and what it means to those towns and what it means to baseball. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, what they did last year actually isn't a bad way. Some of the if you're going to cut out some of these minor leaguers, there'll be better independent leagues uh, where, where those guys try to keep their dreams going, getting paid uh, to play baseball and, and maybe then signing a, an affiliated contract. But, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't I don't know that they're gutting out the dreams of American baseball players. I, I do know they're gutting out the, the dreams of, of small towns to have uh, affiliation with major league teams. Let's go to the Bruins. Tuka Rask retired last week right after we talked. Uh, is he the greatest goaltender in Bruins history? Yes. Yes, he is. And, and he's the most polarizing goalie yes. in history, which I, I've never really figured out. I'm a Tuka guy. Uh, I, I, I know he never won a cup as a starter, and he never, uh, well, he didn't never, but uh, he certainly missed a few important games over the course of his career. But the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, when healthy, he was... As good as it got, he backstopped uh, a run of, uh, if not championship success, certainly sustained success. Uh, it is, you know, digging into it a little bit, it is amazing that there is not a goalie's number retired by the Bruins. Huh. And I don't know that I, I didn't really, I always assumed Jerry Cheevers, who's a Hall of Famer, had had his number retired, and he didn't. Um, so does Tuka Rask become the first goalie in Bruins history to have his number retired? I, I think if you're going to do that, you probably have to retire Achievers too. Uh, maybe you do the two of them. You have goalie night. You have the two of them at the same time. Maybe Tiny Thompson uh, from way back. Uh, so, I, you, know, I, you know, is he the best? Yeah, I think he is because of longevity and because of the numbers and, and because of the sustained success. You know, Achievers, Achievers was, was amazing and you know, had he done a little bit longer, he'd have numbers like Tuka. But I think, yes, Tuka's the greatest in Bruins history. How about a couple of former Bruins last night skating around in a very good Team USA and Slovakia matchup on the ice in Beijing? Stephen Kampfer, long time, you know, Bruin who won a, a cup back, uh, you know, in the uh, early 2010s, what, 2010, 2011. And then I'm a little less enthused about Peter Chalaric scoring the game-winning goal for Slovakia to knock the Americans out. But a couple of former Bs making an imprint last night. 
Yeah, a really, really disappointing end for Team USA. You know, after they beat Canada, we were all thinking this team might actually have the stuff. Uh, youngest team, uh, most unlikely U.S. team to try to win a medal. Thought they'd at least uh, be in a medal game. I, maybe they thought that, too. Maybe that was part of the problem against the Lock. They had a, a long five-on-three in the third period that they couldn't do anything with. Uh, and, and so, yeah, disappointing. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. Uh, Miro Chatan uh, was coaching a, uh, a youth team in, in Slovakia. Well, he wasn't coaching, but he was showing video of a friend coaching. He's the GM, I think, of the Slovakia, uh, the Slovak team. And uh, the, the kids were going nuts in Slovakia. So, yeah. Uh, you see what it meant to them. Uh, but, again, David Quinn, uh, who I knew pretty well when he coached BU before going to the Rangers, uh, I really thought he had assembled a, a good group here. Of, of the young guys who would try to do something so disappointing for sure by the way how was your bean pot experience i know you spent valentine's day doing the bean pot doesn't everybody want to spend bill uh, valentine's day with billy jaffe uh, <laughs> I, it, uh no is the answer uh, it was great great game uh, always seems to come down to one goal and it did a one nothing game goal with two minutes 46 seconds left uh, from a fourth line the fourth line of bu get it done which i love uh yeah it was uh, another great event and, and you know it really it was just another example of, of sort of realizing what you missed last year. There was no bean pot last year. The bean pot, some people had thought and over the last few years thought that it was kind of getting a little stodgy and a little dated and a little old. The place was banged out. I, I don't know if they actually never looked to see if they called it a full sellout, but it was darn close. Uh, 16, 17,000 people at the garden. The band's going at it early. Uh, it was as rowdy a bean pot final as I remember in a very long time, and the game lived up to it. Tom Karen, Red Sox and Bruins insider at Nesson. Hopefully soon we're talking to you from Fort Myers. That would be the yeah. goal. But uh, Yeah, 15 <laughs> years. I've done 15 bean pots, uh, and that was the first time I didn't get on a plane the next morning to go to spring training. Wow. So uh, uh, very disappointing, to say the least. But uh, hopefully, like we said, I, I think I think Joe Buck is right. Uh, you got two weeks. I mean, you really, I, I, I don't know if I'm ready to say they'll get it done in two weeks, but they have two weeks to sort of salvage this whole thing. Uh, deal by March 1st. At that point, you might have to push back the start of the season a week, but maybe you can slap that week on to the back end of the season without upending everything. Uh, let's hope they figure this out because, uh, you know, with, with football over, you know, you got the Olympics to distract you a little bit, but uh, in the next week or two, the, the people who care about baseball are going to really start to get agitated, and the people who don't care about baseball are going to have more reason not to care about baseball, and none of that is good for the sport. Yep, the pitchforks will be out. So, TC, we'll talk to you next week, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Brady. Appreciate it. Absolutely. There goes Tom Karen, Red Sox and Bruins insider at Nesson. Let the record show TC also agrees with me and Wiggy. He'd trade for Russell Wilson, too. But let's just assume the Patriots stick with Mac Jones. If they're going to stick with him, Please don't fall into this trap that some of you are falling into. I'll tell you what that is next. 96.1 WDEV FM Warren. 96.5 W243AT Berry. 98.3 W252CU Montpelier. AM 550 WDEV Waterbury. This is CBS News on the Hour. Sponsored by Dell Small Business. I'm Matt Piper in New York. More than 70 million Americans are in the path of yet another huge winter storm. The potential for heavy snow in the Midwest and tornadoes in the South. CBS News meteorologist David Parkinson. Memphis and Nashville are likely to be seeing not only damaging wind gusts, but also the potential for tornadoes. And in fact, damaging large tornadoes are possible. The uh, Storm Prediction Center out of the National Weather Service predicting that this is a significant severe risk that is EF two or stronger tornadoes. For a second day, Russia is claiming more of its forces are pulling back from Ukraine's borders after military exercises. But U.S. officials are still skeptical, saying that's not what they see. CBS's Haley Ott is in Kyiv, Ukraine. U.S. intelligence officials and officials generally say that they have not seen any evidence that that is in fact happening. Actually, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that it appeared that the opposite was happening. He said that it appeared that Russian troops, more troops, might be moving towards the Ukrainian border. 
border. Back here, more than a billion dollars is the payout for Texas from pharmaceutical companies as part of the latest settlement in the opioid crisis. The nation's three major pharmaceutical distributors, Cardinal McKesson and Amerisource Bergen, have agreed to pay out $26 billion nationally. More than 4,000 people died in Texas in 2020 due to opioid addiction. That's up more than 30% over the previous year. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. We have secured for Texas over $1.8 billion to date from the makers and distributors of opioids. We have fought this crisis for over seven years, and today we are bringing needed relief to the state of Texas. The Texas Opioid Council will decide where the money goes. Chris Fox for CBS News, Austin. And the Dallas Cowboys have paid more than $2 million in a case of alleged voyeurism by a senior team official. That settlement is about $2.4 million, according to ESPN. It'll be divided evenly by the four women who say they saw a longtime Cowboys senior PR man partially hidden in their locker room, holding his iPhone outstretched as they changed clothes. Richard Dalrymple was also accused of taking upskirt photos of a team official, who's also the daughter of owner Jerry Jones. Dalrymple has denied all of it, and the team says an investigation came up with no evidence of wrongdoing. Dalrymple retired earlier this month. Peter King, CBS News. In Brazil. Mudslides and floods sweeping through the mountains of Rio de Janeiro have led to the deaths of at least 78 people. 21 people were found alive, while hundreds have been left homeless in the city of Petropolis. The Dow lost 55 today. The Nasdaq was down 16. S&P gained 4. This is CBS News. It's time for Dell Technologies President's Day deals on business PCs. Call 877-ASK-DELL. Dell Technologies recommends Windows 11 Pro for business. Folks with inventory issues still affecting dealers across our industry, at Lamoille Valley Ford, we have found the solution for getting you into a new vehicle. Tell them, kid. Thanks, Dan. At Lamoille Valley Ford, we're ready for retail. That's right. We are ready to retail order your new Ford today at Lamoille Valley Ford. With our high-volume sales history, there's no better dealership to custom order your new Ford car, truck, or SUV. We are prioritizing your personalized vehicle and doing whatever we can to expedite delivery so you don't have to wait any longer than you have to. And get this. When you retail order from Lamoille Valley Ford, we will discount your order an additional $1,000. Combine that with huge Ford discounts and incentives, you can take up to $6,000 off a retail order F-150. That's huge. Need a vehicle today? No worries. At Lamoy Valley Ford, we have by far Vermont's largest selection of new Fords, including over 150 F-Series trucks in stock and incoming. Woo! So drive Route 14, 15, or 16 to Memorial Valley, Ford, and Hardwick and stay big during our Ready for Retail sales event. At Union Bank, we've been traveling the back roads and main routes of Vermont and New Hampshire for generations. So when it comes to commercial banking, we have experience, services, and the people to get you where you need to be. Union Bank, stay local, go far. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. The world is a constantly changing place, and being informed has never been more important. This is Steve Kathan, WDEV, Vermont's news station, and CBS provide you with up-to-the-minute news and information. Whether it's top and bottom of the hour news, breaking news, or special events, if Vermonters need to know, you can trust that WDEV and CBS will inform you. WDEV, keeping an eye on Vermont, while CBS keeps an eye on the world. Make your opinion heard by texting onto the Brady Farkas Show at 802-585-3026. Now it's back to the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV AM, FM, and WDEVradio.com. Welcome back in. Brady Farkas Show right here on WDEV, AM and FM, and WDEVradio.com. High school basketball coming up about 40 minutes from now. Brent Curtis will be on the call for the Randolph and Montpelier boys. So we'll have the coverage then again for you at 645. Napa Morrisville, Napa Waterbury. Text line is open, 802-585-3026. The Facebook Live crew is here, so you can watch us every single day on our WDEV Facebook page. I'm going to get to the Mac Jones stuff here in about five minutes, but I have to I have to give some free, unsolicited advice out there. But I'm finding that I'm largely in the minority here. So maybe instead of advice, it's going to turn into a debate. Text line open, Facebook Live open. It all stems from this. Olympic champion gymnast Simone Biles got engaged on Valentine's Day. So I saw the headline... Everywhere. Pop culture sites. She even might have put it out herself on social media. Her boyfriend, you know, now fiance, plays in the NFL for the Houston Texans. His name is Jonathan Owens. So 
he proposed to her on Valentine's Day. And my advice, or at least my thought here, is for all people who are looking to propose, whether you are a man looking to propose or a woman looking to propose, my advice to you, my free advice to you, do not propose on Valentine's Day. Seriously. I am very happy for Jonathan Owens and Simone Biles. I'm happy for anybody who finds love. Love is hard. Love takes a long time. Love takes a lot of work. And... It's a great accomplishment to get engaged and subsequently get married. I'm very happy for this particular couple and for all couples who get engaged. That said, if you are going to propose, please don't do it on Valentine's Day. And let's take it one step further. Don't propose on Valentine's Day. Do not propose on Christmas. Do not propose on New Year's, either New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. And do not, I repeat, ever propose on your significant other's birthday. Don't propose on any holiday. That is my rule. Do not propose on any holiday. 802-585-3026. How do you feel about my golden rule? And there's multiple reasons why. I cringe. Cringe when I see people proposing on these days. One, it's just corny. Okay? It is corny. It's too corny and obvious to propose on Valentine's Day. I mean, really? Can't we as a society be more creative than this it, it shows a total lack of creativity to propose on a holiday two your significant other deserves their own day if your significant other is so important to you that you want them that you want to be with them forever they deserve their own day valentine's day that's already a day her birthday, that's already a day. Christmas Eve, already a day. Christmas morning, already a day. Uh, the, uh, New Year's Eve, already a day. New Year's Day, already a day. Give your person their own day. Give your person their own day. You shouldn't have to, your person shouldn't have to share their day with Santa Claus or Cupid or family gatherings that come with other holidays. Just don't do it. Turn a random Tuesday into a into the best day ever. Turn a random Friday into the best day ever. Bob wants to know what day I proposed. Friday, March 5th, last year. Okay? It was a Friday. It was meaningful to it was it's meaningful for us now. It had no meaning to us prior. I did not propose on Valentine's Day and I didn't want to propose on Valentine's Day. Friday, March 5th of last year. Steve says, agreed 100%. Mary and Randolph says, totally agree. I loved my proposal. Absolutely unexpected with a lifetime of joy to follow. There you go. And that's coming from a woman's perspective, somebody who was proposed to. Those days, they're already days. They already have meaning in our lives and in your significant other's lives. Give them the gift of another day that has meaning, a standalone day, a day that they will remember forever, that nothing else about that day was ever important until you made it important. And then, let's see, let's go to the Facebook Live crew. Anthony says, any holiday or birthday, I would agree, do not propose that day. The ring is considered a gift. Okay, I don't get what Anthony's saying, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't propose on those days either. And then I got to say this, and I know you're not thinking this way going into the proposal, but let's be real. If the situation ends up not working out, you've scarred the holiday for both of you for life. Do you want that? Again, when you propose, I'm well aware you're planning for it to work. I'm planning for my marriage to work as well. So, but if it doesn't work and you've proposed on Christmas, congratulations. You have just made Christmas a bad memory for each of you for the rest of your lives. Is that something that you want? Hey, New Year's Day, it's the anniversary of the day I proposed and then we broke up eventually. That's not so fun. I'm not interested in that. And I don't think she or he would be interested in that either. For the record, 
I asked Freddie Coleman of ESPN Radio this same question earlier today. The full interview is available on our podcast channel. And Freddie had a funny comment and then told me I was wrong. Well, Valentine's Day is not a holiday. It's a day that people observe. <laughs> now, holiday to me is Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's Day. Those are holidays. Valentine's Day is a day that people observe. But I'm not going to crush somebody for wanting to propose to somebody they want to be their soulmate for the rest of their life. That could be February 14th, April 14th, whatever that is. So I get the sentimentality. It's a day that people are going to remember, and it's a day that both of them are going to remember. But let's not confuse things. Brady's not a holiday. It's a day of <laughs> observance, and let's not go any further than that. So Freddie says Valentine's Day is not a holiday. It's a day of observance. But he also doesn't care when you propose. I had somebody on Twitter yesterday like telling me to rank the things that I hate because they've gotten tired of me complaining. I've been doing radio for eight years and this person couldn't come up with 10 things that i rail against so i clearly don't complain all that much there are a few things i'm very very strongly opinionated about though this is one do not propose on holidays teams should not wear jerseys of cities that they stole jerseys from like i'm not interested in the hartford whalers jerseys being worn by the carolina hurricanes i'm very very uh i'm very very uh, against that. I'm against gambling guy and fantasy guy coming up to me at a bar. But beyond that, I don't think I have that many things that I rail against, like, continuously. This is one of them. I could probably do this same segment every single year. Do not propose on Valentine's Day or on uh, any other holiday. Shannon says, I agree 1,000%. Can we also include proposing at other people's weddings as a no-no? Yes! Proposing at other people's weddings, that is worse than proposing on other holidays. Like, imagine that. Jess and I are going to get married, right? And we invite this crew of people. And my, my boy busts out the ring and asks his significant other. Like, dude, you couldn't have waited 24 hours? You couldn't have waited 10 hours until we were done? Like, our day should be our day. You should not be proposing on someone else's wedding. Not a good idea. Bad look. Bad friend award if you go and do that. So Facebook Live is open. The text line is open, 802-585-3026. Now, let's rein this back into sports. We started out the show talking about Mac Jones, and I said I would trade Mac Jones for Russell Wilson. I would trade Mac Jones and two first-round picks for Russell Wilson. Let's just go under the assumption that Mac Jones is going to be here next year. If Mac Jones is going to be here next year, please, as a fan, do not fall into the trap of just, assume, of just assuming that Mac Jones' intangibles are enough. Do not fall into the trap of just assuming that those are enough to get you by. Mark Dindero is a radio host at WEEI in Providence. And I heard him say this yesterday, and it just made me cringe. Then you factor in what we saw in the Pro Bowl, and I don't want to make a huge deal of this, but I'm just saying, the guy is, he's got swagger, okay? He has an aura about him, okay? He exudes something, confidence, I don't know what you want to call it, but he's got it, okay? The magnetism that he has and that he puts on display is why we heard some of the Patriots this year say they enjoyed being around him as much as they did. And then Mark Dendero took it one step further on Max Intangibles. That, what we saw and what he's got, is something Aaron Rodgers has never had. Now, Rodgers has all the skill in the world on the field, but what has that gotten them? One Super Bowl and one appearance in the Super Bowl. Yep. I'm not saying Mac Jones is going to be able to take swagger, confidence, and being, you know, a leader to the Super Bowl, but I think that's a huge trait as a starting quarterback to have, and it's something that holds other guys back, a la Rodgers. Let's not get confused. Mark finally, smartly started to walk it back at the end. Just having the intangibles does not put Mac Jones in the Super Bowl conversation. Please do not believe that. Simply being a good person, simply being a nice guy, simply being a good leader is not enough to get the Patriots back to the Super Bowl. Now, I don't want to be misconstrued here. Having great intangibles, they are important. 
for a quarterback, they're really important. To be a good leader, to understand the offense, to have mental acumen, to be able to relate to teammates from all shapes and sizes and all walks of life, it's all vital. And guys that have those things or guys that are lacking those things, they have a hard time succeeding. Look at, Go find what's happening right now with Kyler Murray in Arizona. His lack of intangibles is alarming people down there. So having the intangibles are good. But you know what else is good? In fact, you know what else is critical? It's critical for your team and your quarterback to have real special talent. Being a good guy, being a good leader, it's important. It's also important to have elite talent and to have elite talent around you. You have to have both. You are not just willing yourself to a title because of intangibles. And that is where I felt Mark Dendero was going with that. I feel so good about Mac because he's just got something. Well, you can have that something as a leader. It's got to be coupled with something else. Dak Prescott's got something special as a leader, has never been to a Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford had toughness and had the intangibles for 12 years in Detroit and never won a playoff game. Kirk Cousins has a lot of intangibles, can't get to the playoffs in Minnesota beyond one time. I mean, there's a lot of guys who have grit, toughness, heart, smarts, ability to relate. They've got it all that way, and they can't win. So don't, don't try to force-feed me the narrative that Mac Jones has it above the shoulders, and that's good enough. It's not. This Patriots team, as I said in hour one, as I said last week, this AFC is loaded. The Patriots need special qualities both above the shoulders, but special qualities below the shoulders too. They need strength, power, explosiveness. You are not beating the Buffalo Bills with just the intangibles. You are not beating the Kansas City Chiefs with just the intangibles or the Chargers or the Ravens or the Bengals or maybe the Browns roster. Make no mistake, those teams are all perceived to be ahead of you. Buffalo, Cleveland, uh, Cincy, Kansas City, Justin Herbert and the Chargers, they're all perceived to be ahead of you. And you know what? If you don't believe me, Listen to the experts, Colin Cowherd, Fox Sports Radio. He was talking about the AFC earlier today. Because the AFC now, in my opinion, is stronger than the NFC. Baltimore gets Lamar Jackson back. Cleveland, that's really been tough on Cincinnati, gets Baker back. What if the Steelers land a Garoppolo or a solid quarterback? The Chargers, Denver. So he mentions the entire AFC North, Denver, the Chargers. And then we already know about the Bills and Chiefs. That is Let's see, four teams in the north, Denver the Chargers is six, Bills and Chiefs, I mean, that's, that's four, five, six, that's eight teams mentioned by Colin, and he never once mentioned you. The intangibles alone are not taking you past all of these teams. I'm not trying, this is going to be, this is going to become my off-season mantra, because I'm going to say this, I can feel it, I'm going to say this 50 more times before we get to training camp. I am not a Mac Jones hater. I am a Mac Jones realist. Mac Jones has qualities that I love. He has the ability to be very good, but very good isn't enough right now. And I don't want you to go through this offseason and hear sound bites like Mark Dendero just gave you and think that you should be so, so encouraged by where the Patriots are. You shouldn't be. You should look at it logically. Kansas City is better than you outright. Buffalo is better than you outright. Uh, Baltimore is better than you outright. Cleveland has a better roster than you outright. Cincy has a better quarterback than you outright. I mean, that right there, I mean, and if Denver gets Aaron Rodgers, they're going to vault right to the top of the class two and vault right past you. This is where the Patriots are. They're good, but don't fall for the trap that people are setting for you. They're not good enough to just will themselves to back to the head of the class. It's not going to happen. You've got to have the special qualities both in the, in the head and on the athletic side as well. And the Patriots right now are lacking it, and Mac Jones is lacking it too. It's the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV, AM and FM, and WDEVradio.com. All right, you know what? I mentioned Kyler Murray. 
a few minutes ago. Kyler Murray's part of our Who's Saying What today. Let's get to it here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did he say? Mac Jones? Good Lord. Mel Kuyper's got to slow down on this. Mac Jones ain't going to work, folks. It's not going to work. He's got to come to terms with it. It's not going to work. They really said that? Every damn thing is politics and race. And I'm losing my mind over it. It's time for Who's Saying What on the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV AM, FM, and WDEVradio.com. Before I get to who's saying what, I did get a message in from Tommy on the Napa Morrisville Napa Waterbury text line. It says, also, don't choose February 29th for a special occasion if you want to celebrate it every year. Yeah, don't, uh, don't get married on February 29th. Then you don't get an anniversary every year. You only get one every four years for the leap year. So good, wise words there from Tommy. So, all right, who's saying what is brought to you by Vermont Laser Wash. That's Central Vermont's home of unlimited car washes. It begins at just $20 a month. So if you want to be in the club, unlimited car washes, 20 bucks a month. If you want just one free car wash, well, my listeners just need to text the word Vermont to the number 30, followed by 400. So I mentioned Kyler Murray's name a minute ago. Let's, so, so let's go here. Are all of you following what's happening with Kyler Murray in Arizona? So remember this. The car, here's the background. The Cardinals were the last unbeaten team in the NFL. Then they went on a big swoon. Kyler Murray got injured. They got embarrassed by the Rams in the first round of the playoffs. Fast forward. A couple weeks later, Kyler Murray scrubbed all the Cardinals-related content from his social media, so people speculate that he wants out. Then I heard that he was embarrassed by what happened in the playoffs, and he thought the team didn't do enough to support him. Then I hear people think he's a weird dude who's really immature, and all of that, that recipe gets stirred up together, and it leads us to this take from one Kevin Wilds of Fox Sports 1. Kyler, I saw the beginning of the movie, now I'd like to jump to the end, which is you leaving Arizona. Just pack your bags and leave. And I know everyone's going to say, Wilds, wow, you're really jumping all the way to the furthest, most extreme. Like, yeah, I am. Because we are in the golden age of, if this is not working for me, I'm out and I'm going to find success. It worked for Tom Brady. It worked for Gronkowski. It worked yep. for Odell. Yep. It worked for Matthew Stafford. Yep. Why wouldn't it work for yep. Kyler? So that's what Kevin Wilde says, that Kyler Murray should take his ball and go home and demand a trade. 802-585-3026 and the Facebook Live crew as well. I have a lot of thoughts on this. First off, let's understand this. That was a really poor list of athletes chosen to make your point was it tom brady is not the same situation as kyler murray tom brady didn't force his way out of new england and then find success he was a free agent and he left and like hundreds of free agents do in every sport every year so putting him in the same category of uh, as kyler murray that's just factually inaccurate and kyler murray has played three years three years he's not the same as Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford spent t 12 years in Detroit. He spent 12 years in one spot, was a good soldier, had just four winning records. Matthew Stafford gutted it out, played hurt, never said anything, and then behind closed doors asked, nightly, asked nicely to get out at age 33. He's not the same as Kyler Murray. Don't, don't bring up Kyler Murray's situation in the same breath as Matt Stafford. The Lions didn't do a whole lot to help Matthew Stafford in 12 years. Kyler Murray's been given everything. They got rid of their previous first-round quarterback in Josh Rosen for Kyler Murray. They got rid of their head coach and brought in the guy who recruited Kyler Murray in college, and that's Cliff Kingsbury. They brought in J.J. Watt. They've traded for DeAndre Hopkins. They have given Kyler Murray stuff that Matthew Stafford was never given. It was understandable that Stafford would want, would want out, and he gutted it out four times as long in Detroit as, as Murray's been in Arizona. They're not the same. And then finally, can we play, guys, maybe like the very end of that quote? It worked yep. for Odell. Yep. It worked for Matthew Stafford. Yep. Why wouldn't it work for yep. Kyler? Okay, before that, he had said, we're in the golden age of athletes, you know, calling their shot, essentially. Are we really? Are we really in the golden age of athletes who call their shot and then it actually works? Because this idea that the grass is always greener, it's not reality. How did it work for Kyrie Irving? 
forcing his way out of Cleveland. Hasn't worked, has it? Didn't work in Boston. Hasn't worked in Brooklyn. Kyler, or, uh, Kyrie Irving forcing his way out, calling his shot, athlete empowerment, has flopped. How'd it work for James Harden, forced his way out of Houston? Flop. How'd it work for Dwight Howard, the original king of this, I think, forcing his way out of Orlando? Flop. Chris Paul has come back now, but has he won a title? Flop, forcing his way out of New Orleans. Carson Wentz, oh, the change of scenery will help him. He's about to get released from the Indianapolis Colts. So Wilds is saying, hey, the grass is always greener and everyone's doing it and finding success, so you should too. They're not all finding success. You use OBJ as an example, Kevin Wilds. Oh, he forced his way out of New York, and by the way, it took him a long time to get to this point with the Rams. He was in Cleveland for multiple seasons, and it didn't work. So, I mean, fine. You think he got his? You got he got out of Cleveland and found success. Great. Well, what about when he got out of New York and he didn't find success? Doesn't always happen. Le'Veon Bell tried to strong arm the Steelers. Didn't work. Paul George left the Thunder. Hasn't worked. Jimmy Butler strong armed the Chicago Bulls. Has he won a title? No. So Wilds makes you believe that everybody can force their way out. They're, they're going to find success. That's not true at all. I just gave you 10 examples of people that wanted out that it hasn't worked for. I can think of two that it has. Anthony Davis is one. Kawhi Leonard is the other. That's it. Davis wants out of New Orleans, won a title with the Lakers. Kawhi wanted out of San Antonio, won a title with Toronto, and has now gotten to, to, to the Clippers where he wanted. That's it. That's the list of people that I can think of off the top of my head that it has worked perfectly for. That's it. So this whole, uh, oh, it, th th this is the time where athletes can call their shot and it works out for everybody. Not true at all. And Matthew Stafford, yeah, it worked out for him. Kyler Murray is nowhere near in the same stratosphere of the same situation as Matthew Stafford was. So, please, stop with that. Joe says Kyler Murray should go to Pittsburgh. I think he would be a good fit there with uh, Harris and Johnson. Uh, on that note, I did get another message that says, if Kyler Murray leaves, this one came from Oliver on the Napa Morrisville, Napa Waterbury text line. Let me grab this again. He says, if Kyler Murray leaves, he better be going back to baseball. In my opinion, with how his play went down the stretch and his attitude after the season, I don't think the list of football teams wanting him is very big. Oliver, noble concept, not even close to true. Not even close to true. If Kyler Murray did actually want, you know, if he actually went and asked for a trade and the Cardinals actually acquiesced, the desire for Kyler Murray on the trade market would be massive. It would be, there, there would be 15 teams signed up for him. I mean, off the top of my head, Philly would want him. Washington would want him. The Giants would want him. That's three-fourths of the NFC East. Minnesota would want him. Detroit would want him. Green Bay, depending on what happened with Aaron Rodgers, they'd probably want him. That's three-fourths of the NFC North. In the NFC South, uh, Tampa would want him. Carolina would want him. So would New Orleans. That's three-fourths of the NFC South. NFC West, they're set there. And in the AFC, Miami would take him, Houston would take him, Indy would take him, Cleveland would take him. Like, right off the bat, I mean, we're looking at 13 to 15 to 17 teams that would want Kyler Murray. Like, teams will sell their souls for a franchise quarterback. And teams will also always assume that someone else's problem won't be their problem. Like, Ben Simmons, second chance. James Harden third chance. Antonio Brown, how many chances did he get? Like, how good you are dictates how many chances you'll get, and Kyler Murray is no different. So if the, the minute that he asks for the trade and if the Cardinals actually go along with it, there's going to be half the league is going to line up to try to get him. So, I'm not for players doing this, especially so young into their careers and so unproven. Like, as far as I'm concerned, Kyler Murray's got two years left on his deal. Play your two years, and if you want out that bad, then leave there. You'll still be young, and you can go be a free agent and try to make a boatload of money that way. Th that's, that's exactly what I would say to him. So uh, I don't think it'd be smart. I don't think it'd be simple for him to just leave and go find success. It's the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV, AM and FM, and WDEVradio.com. Did you see 
this news that came out on Monday, Major League Baseball wants to cut 30 additional players per organization. They want to cut 30 players per organization. I'm really mad about this, too, but not for the reason you may think. I'll tell you why this bothers me. That's next on DEV. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you 24-7 with supplies and solutions for every industry and access to product specialists ready to help. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Exergen would like you to know about an important study just released by the FDA. It confirms what the medical community has known all along. Non-contact thermometers are not accurate. The study also reports that they fail to meet FDA requirements for accuracy and labeling. We can't afford to tolerate the rampant false temperature readings from non-contact thermometers. Accurate temperature measurements are essential. You need Exergen thermometers because they are accurate and backed by over 100 clinical studies. Be sure, be accurate with Exergen. Learn more at Exergen.com. The Push It, Pull It, or Tow It sale is back at Lamoille Valley Chevy. We would like to thank all our customers and our entire team for helping Lamoille Valley Chevy become the number one volume Chevy truck dealer in Vermont for the second year in a row. Due to the success of the countdown to 4,000, our lot is now overstocked with more one-owner, low-miles, late-model cars, trucks, and SUVs. And I can remember that I've instructed my entire team we need to sell them down. Here's how the push it, pull it, or tow it sale works. Through the end of February, anyone can push, pull, or tow any single trade to a Moyle Valley Chevy and get a $3,000 minimum trade allowance for any in stock, pre owned car, truck, or SUV on our lot. Don't worry, if your trade is worth more, you're going to get it. And folks, at a Moyle Valley Chevy, we have a huge selection of certified pre owned cars, trucks, and SUVs that come with a better than new 100,000 mile warranty, and you can get a guarantee minimum trade allowance of $3,000 on these vehicles, too. So get to the Push It, Pull It, or Tow It sale happening right now at Lemoyle Valley Chevy. And remember, at Lemoyle Valley Chevy, we know price matters. WDEV at 90 is underwritten by Northfield Savings Bank. They're the bank of you and everything you do at nsbvt.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Celebrating 90 years. WDEV. As Vermonters, we know that so much depends on the weather. When you need a reliable local weather forecast, it's literally at your fingertips with the WDEV weather phone. Locally dial 244-1172 or toll free at 1-800-585-1211. Roger Hill's weather forecast is just a phone call away on the WDEV weather phone, 244-1172 or 1-800-585-1211. Want Brady to hear your opinion on the sports stories of the day? Text in at 802-585-3026. Now it's back to the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV AM, FM, and WDEVradio.com. Welcome back, Brady Farkas Show. We're on WDEV, AM and FM, and WDEVradio.com. Show brought to you in part by Pro Driver Training. That's Pro Driver Training, Vermont's premier truck driver training school, online at ProDriverCDL.com. They're out in Enosburg and in Milton with their facilities. And again, ProDriverCDL.com. High school basketball comes up about 10 minutes from now. It's Randolph and Montpelier on the boys' side. Brent Curtis sitting courtside waiting for the call. Did you see this story? Jeff Passett of ESPN reported on Monday, Major League Baseball, the owners, they want to cut the amount of players allowed in a team system in their organization from 180 players total to 150 players total. So they want to eliminate 30 player jobs per organization. I think this is a horrible decision. I think this is a horrible desire, rather. It's not a decision yet. It's part of, a, you know, I think it's part of the negotiations going back and forth. It's a horrible thing for Major League Baseball to want to do this, but it's not horrible for the reason that everybody thinks. I read a lot of commentary on social media over the last couple of days where guys were saying, oh, my God, if you cut, if you cut 30 players, then you're taking away my dream. Oh, my God, they're going to cut 30 guys' jobs. Let's understand this and let's, let's look at it honestly here. I wouldn't look at it that way. There's already 
Like, baseball already does a way better job at giving guys a chance and extending a guy's career than any other sport. So I don't want to hear, like, you're taking a harpoon to my dream by getting rid of 30 minor league jobs. There's a very, very small minor league population in basketball. There's a pretty small minor league population in hockey. There's an extremely small practice squad in football. So if baseball had 120, uh, had a 150 players in the system, so let's 25 on the active roster and 125 more hanging around, that would be light years ahead of what the other sports are doing. So their baseball still, no matter what, will by far be the best at giving guys chances. So I don't want to hear that. But regardless, so put that in one box, this is a horrible look. Baseball shouldn't be doing this as far as I'm concerned. It's not, the, it's not the travesty that some people think it is from, again, cutting guys' careers short. It's a travesty for multiple other reasons. The whole thing goes to show you just how cheap baseball guys are, how cheap baseball owners are. And this should perfectly encapsulate to you why in this battle of owners versus players, you should be siding with the players. The owners are cheap. This isn't a battle of billionaires versus millionaires. This is billionaires trying to cut callously every expense they possibly can. Listen to this. Cutting the Vermont Lake Monsters last year, cutting 42 teams out of minor league baseball, it saved major league owners $1 million. Your Vermont Lake Monsters were cut to save $1 million million dollars the owners are cheap as hell and you should be siding with the players and now this proves it even further because you know what 30 minor league players if your organization cuts 30 minor league players you know how much money that saves five hundred thousand dollars a year five hundred thousand dollars a year is less than the major league minimum it is less than one you know one long reliever that's a rookie 30 jobs are going to be cut because the owners want to save $500,000. The owners are cheap as hell, and you should be siding with the players. I'm not so much mad that 30 guys that probably were never going to make the major leagues anyways don't get a chance to keep playing. I'm not as mad about that. I'm more mad that, 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 that the owners are trying to paint themselves as right in these situations and are trying to paint the players out to be greedy when evidently, oh, they are not or they are not the most greedy of the two parties. They are not the mainly offending party. I asked Tom Karen about this earlier in the show, and here's what he had to say, and I agree with him. What I hate about it more than anything, and other than the people losing their job, you don't want anybody to lose a job, but what I hate about it, it's just, it's a bad look. You know, the owners are getting crushed in the, in the court of public opinion, uh, even though I, I think it's a little closer to the middle right now than you think. Uh, certainly... And the owners have won the last couple of uh, labor negotiations, and the players are trying to get some of that back, as they should. Uh, but it just, it's, you know, after, after eliminating teams last year, uh, now talking about eliminating jobs. And it's a bad look. That's exactly the way that Tom Karen said it, and he's exactly right. It's a bad look. And it shows you that you should be cheering on the players in this, because like in most of our jobs, right, most jobs, Management is always looking for a way to cut something, right? I love where I work. I'm not talking about my place, but trust me, I have been at multiple other places where management was always the bad guy. And in this case, management is showing you their true colors. The, the owners are the bad guys. They're trying to cut 30 jobs to save 500 grand a year. That is nothing to a major league baseball owner, 500 grand a year. It's not even as much as the worst r rookie reliever on their team will be. It's $70,000 less than the major league minimum. It's ridiculous. And then another reason that I hate this, reason number two that I hate this, is that the owner's cheapness is getting in the way of them building as good a team as possible. Here's what I believe. I believe that as an owner, you should want 
as many chances as you can possibly have to find good players. Your goal should be to win a World Series. And we talk about teams uncovering every rock and uncovering every stone to find that one hidden gem. And you're telling me that you want to cut 30 jobs and cut 30 players, and you want to reduce your chances of finding those players that can help you build a championship team. I get it. Of those 30 guys, most, if not all, won't make the majors. But there might be one who does, who, goes, who, who helps you win a World Series. Wouldn't you want the ability to find that guy? I want to know that my team is doing everything that it can to find talent. And you're trying to take all the, you're trying to, to take more talent away? I don't like to hear that. If I'm a Red Sox fan, I want High and Bloom to have more people at his disposal to choose from, not less. Heck, if the Red Sox want to have 300 players in their system and they want to keep 150 of them on their complex in Fort Myers, then so be it. Then so be it. That's what I would be, you know, like that's what I would want if I were a fan. I want to know that my team is working to find talent, not actively looking to get rid of it. So I, I think this is a terrible idea. Teams should want more players in their system, not less, so they can find good ones and they can parse everything out. And two, it's just completely unnecessary and it shows the owners true colors. And then three, this is probably the biggest problem I have with this. This decision, this desire, rather, it's just short-sighted for the sport. The sport needs to grow and you're trying to gut it. Look, a, 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 a move like this of cutting these 30 jobs, these 30 players, it's not going to take away the Oakland A's, but it's going to take away the Vermont Lake Monsters. And you're cutting the sport and gutting it from these towns and communities that, baseball, that make baseball great. If you cut 30 players, you're going to cut more minor league teams. And baseball needs those minor league teams. Baseball needs to get affordably in front of young fans and show people that it's fun and that it's accessible. And if all you leave us is the, the major league versions, it's going to become a lot harder to access. And that's not what baseball needs. Baseball need, And all of this, hurting the sport to save 500 grand, it makes zero sense. That's what's happening here. Again, from, from a player's opportunity standpoint, it's not the biggest deal. From, from the growth of the game standpoint, it's a huge deal. Baseball no longer exists. Professional baseball no longer exists in Burlington. It no longer exists in 41 other communities around the state. And if you cut 30 players per team, that's probably 30 more communities it no longer exists in. And that's a huge problem. And I can't believe that the owners would be so hell-bent on saving 500 grand that they'd want to hurt the sport and hurt its growth. Because if, it hurt, if, if its growth gets hurt, then guess what the owners don't do? They don't make all the money that they want. Because if the sport goes and loses popularity, then the owners don't bring in the revenue that they so much desire. Huge problem, huge mistake, and I completely disagree with it. Buster Only of ESPN is going to stop by with us tomorrow. We'll ask him about this. We do know on the good news front that the owners and players are going to meet tomorrow. It's going to be at 1 o'clock. Hopefully it lasts longer than 20 minutes and ends in a firm, you know, it doesn't end in a firm no. Let's hope there's real conversation and real negotiation, and let's hope that we can get as, you know, closer and closer to a real and meaningful season. That's what we're looking for. They're going to meet tomorrow at 1. We will talk about it with Buster, and we will see what happens. It's the Brady Farkas Show on WDEV, AM and FM, and WDEVradio.com. All right, as for a couple of things here before we wrap up, UVM women's basketball currently on the floor right now at Patrick Jim, taking on UNH. The score after 1 was UVM 15-14 to 14 over UNH. The men's team takes the floor in 15 minutes on the road in Durham. Again, the uh, Wildcats are 7-6 and six in the league. UVM is 12-1. and one. We'll have a lot more on UVM coming up tomorrow. We'll talk with Buster. And uh, I'm sure some more people are going to want to yell at me about things I said about Mac Jones and Russell Wilson, etc. So I'll, I'll review your texts overnight 
and we'll we'll put them in the show tomorrow as well. High School Hoops is coming up next. It is our Northfield Savings Bank high school basketball coverage brought to you by the Vermont Traveler Service Center. It's the Randolph Boys and the Montpelier Boys. Brent Curtis is on the call. Don't forget 11-10 tonight on NBC5, USA-Canada women's hockey gold medal game. USA won it in 2018. Can they repeat? I'll be watching. I hope a lot of you do as well. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Go download the podcast. Don't forget, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Always Brady Farkas show available there. Hi, this is Dave Caterino, and I'm a hospice and palliative registered nurse at Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice. I'm also a longtime resident of the Mad River Valley and an avid skier. I am thrilled to share that Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice is hosting the 34th annual Shea Henri Cup on Saturday, March 5th at Sugarbush Resort. An entry fee of $40 gets you access to our time ski race plus one raffle ticket. Additional raffle tickets are $40 for one, three for $100, and five for $150. We'd like to thank our many local businesses for donating some great prizes to our raffle and to Lawson's Finest Liquids for being our event sponsor. Register to race and to buy raffle tickets online at www.cvhhh.org. We thank you for your support, and we look forward to seeing you on the slopes on Saturday, March 5th. Help our bird friends this winter with a trip to Guy's.